the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Like the video you are about to watch. Hug the way you want, but um, you can turn to your left and right and tell someone good morning. And for our online family, morning to you, afternoon to you, night to you, wherever and whatever the time zone is. We'll continue our journey this morning and I'm excited to be sharing the things that I'll be sharing by the Spirit of God. It's always an honor to bring the Word of God to this church and to the body of Christ through this platform. Spirit of the living God, we depend on you. You are the spirit of revelation you are the spirit of wisdom we ask in the name of jesus the christ of god that you will help us this morning we pray for our global family following all over grant us illumination grant us grace in the name of jesus may your word come with power let it give us insight let it help us to attain maturity and stature in the name that is above all names. Amen and amen. Pastor Dele, thank you. Thank you. I truly honor you and your wife. Please be seated. God bless you. Doctrine. We're discussing the matters of the kingdom. And yesterday we spoke about the assignment. Examining the mandate of the church and our corporate assignment as believers and now we're stepping a little higher to examine the concept of doctrine all through scripture you find out that there was a formula that matured believers in the bible especially when you read the book of acts the bible lets us know again and again that there was an exact spiritual formula that was responsible for the maturity and the dexterity of the early church and if we must see the signs the wonders and the mighty things that were done in their days we must subscribe to the pattern that they followed doctrine this is the mystery behind maturity this is the mystery behind stature yesterday we began to discuss the fact that many believers get saved but the system now that takes them from that outer court if i would call it into the deeper things of the spirit is why there is a lot of confusion the body of christ according to scripture were a people who could not be mistaken every time you saw them you would know this was a christian because there was a common doctrine are we together now there was a common approach to their growth to their maturity but today sadly we have all kinds of versions of people who profess the faith and there is a problem because of what the people eventually become. And sometimes, as students supposedly under different denominations and different mentorship systems, um, we are sometimes we get very surprised at the kind of spiritual products that are produced. And the, the, the factor to blame is doctrine. Doctrine. Is the maker of men in the kingdom 
please pay attention this is very very important what is doctrine i'm trying to be as simple as possible the word doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina let's just do a bit of bible studies it comes from the latin word doctrina and it means teaching it means instructions basically doctrine talks of a set of beliefs that are accepted and taught a set of beliefs not just random they a set of beliefs that are first accepted by a standard whatever standard it has to be accepted please take note of this definition it's not just a body of truth communicated a body of truth that has been accepted if you want to use the word standardized or verified are we together now so we're not just talking of a body of truth we're not even talking of opinions we're talking of a set of beliefs that have been accepted by a reference or by a standard and then taught a body of teachings a body of instructions so you call a body of truth doctrine the qualification for a body of truth to be called doctrine is that it must be standardized based on a reference if that truth is not standardized based on a reference it cannot be called doctrine very simple definition but we can spend the whole day explaining this that means a compromise of the standard usually will start with dishonor to the reference are we together now if there is a reference and the reference is honored it will be difficult to compromise the standard we can trust the graduate that comes from harvard we can trust the graduate that comes from oxford are we together we can trust the graduate that comes from john hopkins say the hospital the doctors there why because we did not need to know the lecturers that taught them we trust the standard are we together now that there was a body of knowledge communicated to them by whoever and we know that there was a system of compliance that ensured that anyone who passed through harvard no matter how high and no matter how low there was a minimum standard he would not come under so if someone came to you and said i'm a graduate a true graduate of harvard there are some questions you will not ask again because the name has already verified it's told you that a standard was kept we're trying to examine what is wrong with the body of christ and why believers fail to mature to a defined standard because the bible tells us that if a believer follows a pattern there is something he should there is a kind of man he should become and now as we look across the length and the breadth of the body of christ from we the men of god to those we are leading we see that there are aberrations and compromises on the kind of formation that the bible says should be so after 5 10 15 20 years in church under active church activities we do not yet see that formation it ought not to be so are we together yeah so we want to examine what is wrong the bible is full of the concept of doctrines please just be a bit patient we're doing a bit of bible study this morning and i hope you do not mind there will be lots of scripture media you would help me so that we we'll work together there are few scriptures that talk about the reality of doctrine as far as the kingdom life is concerned let's look at a few of them please deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 2 i picked out a few and then we'll look at the concept of doctrine as far as the ministry and the mentorship system of jesus was deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 2 it says let my teaching drop as rain please give me kjv thank you kjv thank you very much kjv it says my doctrine shall drop as the rain my speech shall distill as the dew as a small rain upon the tender herb and the showers upon the grass he likens the doctrine 
as rain coming upon a shrub a herb what does it do to it it causes it to grow and it causes it to flourish next scripture proverbs chapter 4 and verse 2 proverbs 4 and verse 2 wisdom speaking now he says for i give you good doctrine forsake not my law three more scriptures isaiah 28 and verse 9 Isaiah 28 and verse 9. Shali paruski Whom shall he teach knowledge? Is a question. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? It says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breasts. Are we together now? That means the, the system that takes believers from infancy to maturity is the communication of doctrine. Isaiah 29 and verse 24. Isaiah 29 and verse 24. They also that erred in the spirit shall come to understanding. My goodness, look at this scripture. And they that murmured because of ignorance, because of childishness, shall learn doctrine. Watch this now. Notice that every time the Bible talks of the transition of individuals in the faith life from childhood to maturity, interfacing them is doctrine. Please keep that scripture there. It says, they who have erred in the spirit, they shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. Last scripture, Jeremiah 10 and verse 8. This is a prayer we must pray for the church and the body of Christ that God will help us avert this tragedy. It says, but they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. There is such a concept as the doctrine of vanities. It is not only the doctrine of demons. There is a doctrine of vanities. When Jesus walked the earth, our pattern man, Jesus is perfect theology. Jesus is our reference. Not only our savior, not only our high priest. The Bible says looking unto Jesus, not unto a prophet. In fact, even when the Bible says to follow Paul speaking, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. That means before you follow me, verify that I am also following Christ. If at any point you find out I am not following Christ, stop following me follow me only as i follow christ are we together let's see how jesus began to mentor the disciples just a few scriptures i'm just touching on it just to build my case on the necessity of doctrine and that doctrine is the mystery that produces stature and maturity across the body matthew chapter 7 and verse 28 what did jesus teach Matthew 7 28 and it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings the Bible says the people were astonished at his so what was he saying doctrine when he was communicating he was not just talking stories he was not just giving rema listen we have to examine the things we have been teaching there there is a set of knowledge, spiritual information that is not profitable for the growth and the maturity of the saints. Just because it is spiritual in context does not mean it is useful. They were astonished at his doctrine. Matthew 22 and verse 33. Please exercise a little patience. Let's talk on these scriptures. It says, when the multitude heard this, they were astonished again at what? his doctrine we see doctrine there again mark chapter 1 please and verse 22 mark 1 22 look at how jesus taught look at how jesus built and they were astonished again at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes chapter 4 same book of mark and verse 2 chapter 4 and verse 2 of mark and he taught them many things in parables 
and said unto them in his doctrine. Doctrine. Mark 11 and verse 18. Mark 11 and verse 18. 11 and 18. The scribes and the chief priests heard it. Now, watch this. He began to teach the people who came around his meetings. He taught them doctrine, matters of the kingdom. And then it got to a point where his doctrine had gotten to the scribes and the chief priests. And when they heard it, listen, it says they sought how they might destroy him for they feared him. What made them afraid of Jesus? I will tell you, because the people were astonished at his doctrine. What created the fear was not the person. It was the power and the effect of what his doctrine was doing to the people. He was teaching them doctrine. And whilst they began to learn, the doctrine was changing them. And it was making them to ask questions the scribes could not answer. Doctrine is powerful. Luke chapter 4, verse 32. Shilabaruski adabalakatusia. Hmm. And they were astonished at his doctrine again, for his word was with power. Two more scriptures John 7 and verse 16. We're looking at the pattern of Jesus' ministry. If we must mature the body from a state of ignorance and infancy, it's not going to come by opinionated rema. That is just handpicked based on our desire and our experiences. There is a pattern, a body of truth and spiritual information already vetted and approved. That if communicated accurately, there is a guarantee that whoever passes that system will become a kind of Christian. John 7 and 16. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but he that sent me. I am a steward of that mystery also. The doctrine is not my invention. I was sent and sent with a doctrine. That means we have a right to vet anybody who said he is sent. Who sent you and what is the body of information given to you? You cannot say you are in ministry. Don't tell me he sent you with a message alone. Uh -uh. What is the doctrine that becomes the authority you have to mentor and to build? The doctrine is not Bible college. No. Bible college is your training to be effective in communicating that doctrine. Your Bible college edifies you, not those you were sent to. Doctrine. When we know this, we know what Satan is really fighting. Because many of what we think Satan is fighting is not what he's fighting. There are few things he needs to take away from the believer. And he can let you continue your activities. Because it remains powerless. No matter how anointed. Isn't it amazing how we protect anointing. And yet we do not protect the sanctity of doctrine. Follow me carefully. We have a very long journey this morning. If I ask the average believer in the African church today, choose anointing or doctrine. Before I finish talking, he would dive at whether it's an oil or a jar. When he picks that oil, he believes that he must be effective in ministry. This is why we are surprised. Because we continue to receive impartations. We have, res I hope you know that I teach from a standpoint of love. I do not teach from a standpoint of sarcasm. I am part of the body. Our admiration and respect for anointing, as wonderful as that is. Doctrine is a strange concept in the body. It's why there are manifestations without the maturity that maintains and sustains them. We have spiritual activities that start revivals like smoke and it evaporates and people return back. Manifestations of power, crusades, packed full of people. People get born again and the harvest rottens because there is no doctrine that preserves. John 18 and verse 19. 
we're examining the ministry of Jesus. And the high priest asked Jesus of his disciples and his doctrine. Look at what the high priest was concerned about. Not his miracles. There were two things that threatened the high priest. One, your doctrine. Two, those listening to it. I am interested in what you are telling them and I'm interested in the loyalty that is coming out of them by reason of what you are communicating. Now, this is our Jesus. You now see why his products were powerful. Out of, out of the 12 disciples who would become apostles of the Lamb, only one. And Judas was not a bad man. Judas was just a selfish man. That's why he could not spend the money. Most of us who spend it, Judas didn't even spend it. I think it's some level of regard for him there. All that you have given me, I have kept, and none is lost, except the son of perdition, and that that scripture will be fulfilled. Notice the son of perdition was not mentioned. Judah aligned with that prophecy. Most of the prophecies in scripture had no names attached to them. So the spirit of grace hovers around a dispensation, finding the vessels that align to that prophecy. Are we together? So we see that all through scripture, doctrine has always been the strategy for building. In the ministry of Jesus, he used parables, but hidden in those parables were doctrines, precepts of the kingdom. Let's look at the ministry of the apostles because there is a condition for any truth to be called a doctrine. Number one, the idea must be captured in the Old Testament. This is theology. Number two, it must be manifest in the life and the ministry of Jesus. Number three, it must be manifest in the life of the apostles. Any truth that is not captured in the Old Testament, any truth that was not manifested in the life and the ministry of Jesus and was not manifested in the life of the apostles does not qualify to be called doctrine. Now, in light of what I'm teaching, we will respectfully look back, just, just like an introspect, and find out most of the things we teach in the body of Christ, do they pass through that test? And do they, are they standardized enough? Yet we have made doctrines out of them. The challenge with the body of Christ largely today is because as well-meaning as we are, our exegesis is largely based on opinions, encounters, and visions as wonderful as they are. They have not passed through the spiritual navdak, if I will use that word, that qualifies them to be called doctrines. So on one hand, the doctrine only, only blesses those who are called in that pattern. Doctrine should profit everyone in the body. So I can communicate truth that only profits people who are going into ministry. If you are in business, my message will not profit you. That's dangerous. Then I can come and teach in a way that you have to be a businessman to be blessed. Then I teach in a way that you, you must have lost your father and your mother for my message to profit you. If you come from parents who are born again, my message will, it will make you feel guilty. All these variations are because we are communicating opinions, well-meaning opinions, based on the mentorship systems we also subscribe to, and we have ignored doctrine. Let's look at the early church. Acts chapter 2. And verse 42. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And they continued steadfastly in what? The apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers look at the pattern again that every time they gathered someone didn't just get up and say i had a dream yesterday everybody sit down get a pen and paper according to my dream i was in a realm i don't know whether it is heaven or where and you see 
I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. A lot of nonsense today is in the body of Christ, especially visionary experiences. I can use my visionary experience and create a Bible school with it. In fact, train people who now train others. So now you are made to feel guilty because you've never had any vision. You see that now? It is not a doctrine. It's an advantage that is based on the election of grace or your quality of alignment. But it is not a doctrine. And so there are many things that are communicated and continue to mislead believers. And so if I now know that if I am not seeing angels based on the theology you have taught me, I'm not matured. The logical thing to do is to begin to lie. I don't lie because I'm bad. I lie because I have to confirm. So I also stand and say I'm seeing angels. And if it gets so bad that while I'm lying, someone now falls under the anointing or is shouting, I can fall into that deception myself. There are... Pastor, you brought me to teach you. The rate at which we claim we see angels every day. The rate at which we claim we see Jesus every day. The rate at which we claim we go to heaven every day. The rate at which we claim we go to hell every day. The rate at which we go to other planets every day. It looks like a proof of spiritual maturity. We are deviating to a catastrophe that if not managed, a generation will stand today that will not know what Christianity is all about. We are, we are fainting the line between Christianity and other religions we are that wall of strength and stability the average child today does not even know what it means to be a Christian Acts chapter 5 and verse 28 we're still doing Bible study Acts chapter 5 and verse 28 they rebuked them sharply saying, did we not straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, help me read, ye have filled Jerusalem with what? And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Ah, this is someone who had died and gone to heaven. But there was a doctrine. There was something that the apostles were teaching. And it was making the people go back to these politicians. And say, so, this man, no, 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 we, we will revisit this case. This man is an innocent man. What is it that a man can teach from a small room and threaten a government with it? You didn't go to a radio station. You gathered a few people and taught them something. And yet the political powers are afraid. They say, we are not going to train you in prison. But please, among the many things you say, do not teach doctrine. I tell you why Satan is not afraid of us starting churches. All he needs to verify is what he will teach. If he knows all you are going to teach are just whatever else aside from doctrine, you are more than welcome. He will give you the support, the backing. I'm saying this because the end time church, one of the things I will wrap up, I told you the final session will be the coming move of God. We will have to examine the sequence, the, the mystery of Enoch and Elijah. You have to study Enoch and Elijah as the spiritual patterns. There has to be a, a restoration of the ordinance and the precepts of the kingdom. The reason why we do not see the glory of God is because his patterns are not kept the glory of God always comes to confirm that his patterns have been kept are we blessed Romans chapter 16 and verse 17 Romans 16 and verse 17 let me just finish this scripture so that I just build on a few things and then we'll wrap up wherever we stop again this morning now I beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to what the 
doctrine which ye have learned. Look at how he's, he's telling them, look, there are a group of people causing confusion. And this is not an emotional thing. They are called enemies with respect to their disrupting doctrine. Not because we have any personal bias with them. Look at the Bible's definition of an enemy to the church. It's not just someone who is not your tribe. It's not just someone whose personality is not the same with you. Whoever mounts himself as a resistance to doctrine is an enemy to the growth of the church. He says, avoid them. Ephesians 4 and verse 14. Let's go to Ephesus now. Paul. Paul is in Ephesus mentoring the body of Christ and now he's bringing context to their spiritual um, their spiritual journey and he's talking about the fivefold or fourfold as we call it theologically he says this is why he gave the apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry are we together until we all together as a corporate body we come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine doctrine is powerful the bible likens it to a wind that it has a way of shifting people and vacillating their convictions to and fro by every wind of doctrine and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. A few more scriptures. First Timothy. Paul is mentoring his son in the gospel now. First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 3. First Timothy 1 and verse 3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went to Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Paul was protecting the doctrine, the sanctity of the doctrine. If you want to be like this church, you must adhere to the doctrine. So you could look at a believer in Ephesus. You could look at a believer in Macedonia and they look the same, even though they never met. Because what made them the same was doctrine. Like you, a doctor from Unilag can meet with a doctor from UI and they greet themselves and literally can begin to talk or do some medical things. The moment they verify, oh, you were trained under professor this, you learned this. But you hardly will say a believer, come from this, come from that, and let's pray immediately. Use prayer as a reference. We are two believers, we love Jesus, let us pray. The first shock will be the content of the prayer and what is going to be said. Are we in agreement on this? Hmm. Someone else will be conscious of his words and what he's saying. Maybe using present tense or past tense to make sure he gets it theologically right. To make sure that all his prayer refers to the finished work of Christ. Someone comes and says, that's nonsense. I'm seeing the demons now as I'm talking to you. I know what I'm saying. Are you seeing that now? And all of them are believers. And all of them have proofs. This is what makes it serious. Where are we? Goodness. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. We have to finish. Timothy. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith by giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils. I think we talked about this the first time I ministered here. You want to get the teaching. This is how apostasy is formed. A deviation from the known patterns of God. And that there are two dimensions to apostasy. Number one, there is the corruption of the vessel himself. But number two, there is the corruption of the doctrine. So the vessel can be wrong together with his doctrine. But number two, the vessel can be sincere, but the doctrine is the doctrine of demons. First Timothy chapter four and verse six. Shilabaruzia takabarandia salash. 
if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister of jesus christ nourished up in the word of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained he uses his ability to preserve doctrine as proof of a good minister of jesus christ you are a good minister of jesus christ to the degree to which you are able to preserve good doctrine are we blessed first timothy chapter 4 again let's read verse 13 and verse 16 13 and verse 16 please be patient with me 13 and 16 till i come give attendance to reading give attendance to exhortation and give attendance to doctrine you know what that means keep reviewing it don't say i've exhausted the curriculum go back again give attendance to doctrine does this look like what fathers of faith used to do when you study the history of the church they would hold camp meetings for 60 days and sometimes talking about the same thing and you are wondering is it that these guys don't have anything new it doesn't have to be new but it should be fresh the body of knowledge that matures believers is finite you can hold the truth it is the knowledge of God that is infinite but the body of truth that matures believers is finite the same way learning never stops but there is a body of truth that produces a graduate you can exhaust it defend it and you are awarded a certificate it doesn't mean you are done learning to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy holy oh to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 open the eyes of my heart lord that's the prayer open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you it's part of the service open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you we'll see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 we'll see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 it's a prayer that was a prayer that paul Paul was trying to teach and teach and teach and he got to a point where he said you know what let's take a break it is for this cause that I Paul I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ there is something he needs to grant to you to make my teaching effective Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 13 and verse 16 can we look at it quickly sorry first timothy i meant to say first timothy 4 13 and 16 first timothy and then let's go to verse 16 now we're looking at a few scriptures it says take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine continue in them please look up can we read this together one to read is projected take heed unto yourself and unto what the doctrine it says continue in them for in doing this 
you shall save yourself and them that hear you he was talking to a man of god that just because you are teaching does not mean you are safe you have to still go back and review these doctrines in doing that you will preserve yourself and those who are loyal to the truth you communicate you can keep teaching while you are deviating yourself until you find out that both you and those you are teaching are no longer truly established in the faith in doing this you shall save yourself and those who hear you three more scriptures second timothy 3 and verse 16. second timothy second timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. all scripture is given by inspiration of god and the bible says scripture is profitable the number one profit of scripture is that it is the basis for communicating doctrine watch this the first reason why scripture is profitable is not because of correction it's not even because of instruction it is because it is the only authorized platform that can help a minister to administer doctrine then reproof correction instruction in righteousness and that's responsible for the maturity when you read verse 17 it tells you that the man of god may be matured the word perfect there means mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works second timothy chapter 4 and verse 3 for the time will come when they will not endure wow so doctrine requires endurance not attentiveness alone there is a dimension of the communication of doctrine that will have to go past the realm of attentiveness you will need endurance ask me what people will be doing for 40 days listening to a resurrected i mean when jesus was dying he was not even thinking about his exaltation he was thinking about the remaining part of the lecture as soon as he resurrected he went poured his blood that whole ceremony was done he returned back with speed he didn't even have time to celebrate say guys let's go back to the class in 50 days the holy ghost is coming i must cover that course what a visionary god if i resurrect from the dead will i teach again ah oh, come on let's be sincere here the same way herod heard about my death he was also here <laughs> please keep that scripture they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts they shall heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears that a time will come this is a prophetic statement that Paul was saying that a time will come when believers will not have the stamina again to endure sound doctrine once the communication does not resonate with their loss they shut it down does it look like what is happening around the body of Christ? Titus chapter 1 and verse 9. We're almost done. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught that ye may be able to by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers that means the basis of our argument if any is not just opinions it is doctrine isn't it amazing how that when you talk to non-christians they will raise a controversial scripture that will begin another debate and sometimes because believers are not matured in doctrine we now begin to also communicate opinions and at the end of it we veer off from what was the initial subject matter and we begin all kinds of bab vain babblings and at the end they convert you the believer because now you find out how ignorant you are you dapple into matters that are not within the curriculum of your training there is a kind of knowledge that is called forbidden knowledge yes that was the knowledge that was captured in the tree 
of good and evil. It is not every knowledge that is needed to be known. So someone will come and ask you and say, okay, after rapture, what happens to those who are in the lake of fire now? And you see it as a challenge and you are guilty. You feel I must defend the name of my Savior and my Lord. Doctrine gives you rest so that you can ignore some answers and still not feel guilty. All you need to do is check within the curriculum of the doctrine apportioned to you. Now you begin all kinds of arguments that don't make sense and eventually you will put yourself in trouble, mislead those who are going with you. Vain babblings. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 9. That will be the last scripture. When the Lord opened my eyes to this mystery, I told the Lord to grant me grace that I was not interested in just being a celebrity preacher but a communicator of doctrine. After this scripture, I'll begin to teach prophetically. So I want you to listen. 13 verse 9. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrine. Notice what doctrines do. They can move people. Every time the Bible talks about strange doctrine, it says it can sway you. Please keep the scripture there. It says, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which should be which have not profited them that have been occupied, so on and so forth. Now he's talking about doctrines, strange doctrines. In 2016 or 15 now, the Lord began to put in my heart the need to introduce among the many things that the body of Christ should have, to call the body of Christ back to the place of doctrine and maturity. And the Lord told me that he will cause an event to happen around the body of Christ that will begin to cause men to return to doctrine. Please follow my teaching. Because a time came in the body of Christ when believers were no longer interested in spiritual growth. Rather loyalty to a man, to a faith, to a denomination. They, there was no passionate and personal interest bookstores would testify that their sales went down because people were no longer interested if someone can pray for me and he can speak over my life and i return with results i will be kind enough to bring the seed to i won't forget about you you just make sure that we're in partnership the spirit of god started causing a shaking now i'm teaching with every sense of honor especially for our global audience and even people who are listening Please understand that this is just a prophetic teaching from the standpoint of truth. The Lord began to do what he told me he would do in an interesting way, sir. God began to raise people within the body of Christ and outside the body of Christ. Or I would say for some God allowed, for some God raised. Who began to challenge what we call status quo in the body. Just follow what I'm telling you. At first, they themselves made mistakes because of the way they approached it. They did not know that the opening of their eyes to see this error was an election of grace. And so they did not approach their communication with love. They came from a standpoint of sarcasm. And so it did not even make the truths they were communicated, they were communicating to be worth considering because they already came with backlash against every other person who was not them. However, in the midst of that flesh and confusion, God was still there. Listen carefully to what I'm telling you. You know what God is in it because regardless of the limitations of men, it still does not die. God is that merciful and he's that powerful. It began to cause men of God and members alike to go back and say, okay, it doesn't matter whether I'm for Paul or Apollos. The most important thing is I need to open my Bible and you will be amazed to know how long many people had not opened their Bible. They had opened YouTube pages to listen to messages, quickly make a jotting in honor of the voice that they respect and went to teach it for many years people would not sit down again 
the word concordance you would not hear it again the word greek hebrew lexicon you would not hear it again so this shaking began to cause members to ask questions why this why that not just that we're doing it what is the understanding and what is the revelation that is behind this and for many of us ministers we were shocked that we did not have answers we just created some some you know the intelligence around it to say look just but the truth is when we went back we said ah god we didn't know we had deviated this much one of the blessings of the shakings that happen in the body of christ was a restoration of the consciousness of doctrine it was a shock how many members were swayed left and right that was a representation of the quality or otherwise of the spiritual products if i will use that word that we're producing how could i be with someone under my leadership for one two decades and with a two weeks lecture all of a sudden my entire 20 years lecture you forgot about it something must be wrong with that quality of teaching it's like insulting a 30 year old woman and saying you are a man and she goes by mirrors everywhere and looking and says is it true that i'm a man no 30 years experience of being a female is more powerful than an ignorant person's advocacy of saying you are a man if that why didn't that happen to us as far as the faith life is concerned then came the pandemic oh the pandemic was a revealer brothers and sisters i sympathize with all those who really went through a lot and all together as a people we've gone through a lot but it was a revealer and it was a harbinger a warning ministers to return back to the place of doctrine because our opinions didn't seem to work again for instance the vacillations around this was it god that caused it was it man that caused it look how confused we were trying to interpret these things and yet we said we've gone to heaven every day we said we met angels every day where was the wisdom you find out from scripture people who had this kind of thing do you know the kind of insights they came with remember i apologize don't forget my apology remember don't forget my apology out of a sincere heart it's a challenge to us doctrine the word of faith movement if you study it historically there were people who there were many other aspects of the faith life they really did not know and they did not get respectfully but in the matters of faith they stayed there the average person who came from those movements were grounded everything that had to do with the word of God the power of the spoken word the mystery of faith they exhausted that curriculum from left to right even at the point of death many of them did not give up their conviction that is worthy of salutation We need to restore doctrine back to the body of Christ. It is the spiritual system allocated for producing men and women of stature. It is not impartation that qualifies men to be teachers of the word and to do ministry. I'm telling you this. You can get an impartation in two minutes, but you do not learn doctrines in two minutes. It takes endurance. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata pako tosko tobre kete kene kata.
the face of development lord grant me the discipline 